Here we are in Rawdon at the Rawdon Gold Mine at it. And it's a night visit tonight. So it's pitch dark here and we're waiting to go in. Um, here's the added over here. Let's walk up and have a look. Uh, we've got all our packs and stuff ready to go in. And uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful opening here in the middle of the woods by the, by the brook. And it's got this framing over the mouth. Um, there used to be a bat study here. Uh, this is a, a bat hibernaculum where they come and roost to hibernate in the winter. And a study was done here in I think 2011, 2012. And this used to have screens and stuff over it and a bunch of signs and different bat counting equipment was sitting out here and uh, it would count them as they flew in and out of a little doorway here. But anyway, it's all gone now, but the, uh, the frame still remains and it's wide open. All right, we're in a ways from the mouth and he's uh, up ahead navigating and just checking the water as we go. It's, uh, it's nearly over rubber boot level and it may actually go over. We'll see once we get a little deeper, but uh, he's making his way. Meanwhile, uh, it's a little small in here compared to some other adits we've been in, but uh, this one allegedly goes over 900 feet into the mountain. So we're gonna see how far this actually does go. And it's a gold mine, an old gold mine. So here's the floor, um, like I say, about maybe where I'm standing. Six to eight inches of water right here, but it does get deeper up ahead. There's logs and debris here at the beginning, but that ends up going away quite quickly. And if you look down there, there is the, uh, there's the mouth where we came in through that, uh, that screen frame. We're in about uh, 70, 80 feet at this point, and uh, his boots are a little higher than mine, although I think he's gonna end up forfeiting. <laughs> uh, if you look down here at mine, I have definitely forfeited. I am over my boots officially, so I am uh, just below my knees by maybe four or five inches at this point. Uh, the water's a little cold, but it's, it's not uh, outrageous. And uh, believe it or not, inside the rubber boots, it starts to warm up and create an insulating layer. So I'll just have to put up with it, and we both will. There's some, uh, some spikes in the rock. We're just making our way in the water here. Bugs? What kind of bugs? Oh, okay. Creepy crawly. Look like flies. So we're finding other footprints that were in this mine here. Here's some in the mud. Uh, these are not us. That one right there. Not us. That one right there, not us. So, others have come this far. I see uh, track, track ties starting. Going across up the, up the floor there. Okay, we're about two or 300 feet in at this point. Just making our way along. But um, up here, there's something that he's uh, seeing with his light. Let's see what we've got here. Some mesh and a broken door. So here we are. Um, 
this uh, I guess plug assembly of some sort. There's some cinder blocks down there. There's this big steel orange plate. And like I say, there was this uh, chicken wire and framing. So it does look like it was some kind of a doorway. There's these weird orange formations dripping. It looks like an, an orange coral or a brain, but that's, uh, that's kind of mushy and made of mud. It's just slowly precipitating in from the, uh, the groundwater. Okay, I'm gonna step through this, uh, through the chicken wire. And let's uh, go through here. There we go. That's what it looks like on the other side. So it looks like this might have been part of the bat study or it was a way to keep people from continuing f past this point, sort of a, a seal of the mine. If it was, it's quite a, quite a ways in, but uh, you know, this would be probably the 250 foot mark. There's more of those crazy orange brains dripping in. You can see this one here forming. There's the water dripping off it at the bottom. There's boards like this on the floor. And there is some uh, continual water flow coming uh, out of the mine. So here's a, a big blob of this brainy stuff. And again, we've never seen this in any of our mine walks to date. And just to give you an idea, it looks like hard, but uh, if you touch it, it's, it's pure slop. Like, it's just like the lightest, it's almost like um, dark brown whipped cream. Now it'd be interesting to note, this is another type of rock we've not seen in a mine either. There's this beautiful, deep, shiny, chocolatey stone that's all here on the ground. And uh, if you look, there's some veins of it here on the wall near the floor. And it, it only lasts, like right, this is the first time we've seen it in a mine. We're probably 300, 400 feet in at this point. But just this, the richest brown color, it, it just shines in your light. I don't know if the camera can pick it up properly, but up here he says it's, uh, it got, gets a little bigger. Just sort of a, a dug, dug out area. Oh, I see. So off to the side of the drift, there's a, a big area here that was uh, taken out to the side. And you can see the, uh, the angle of the rock strata there. All right, folks, we're maybe 500 feet in at this point, and uh, he sees some workings up ahead there. Let's have a look with the flashlight. Yeah, it's like a box or something. We're coming up on where we saw the, uh, the square up ahead. Wow. So there's lots of uh, equipment and workings type of stuff here. What would those be? No, no, for no. We just can't see. Those are cinder blocks of some sort. <laughs> and I, I've never seen those before. Yeah, these strange hexagonal pieces of pipe or something. They uh, they look like they're made of terracotta. There's a big pipe here on the floor. water coming out of it goes down there into the distance I'm standing on that uh, I don't know I say a f 10 inch pipe 11 inch pipe that we I showed the water coming out of there's this weird sludge behind it to the left there and then of course it's dry on the right it's almost acting like a dam look it's holding back it, it takes sort of an elbow there to the right and heads heads inward keeps going but on this side of it is this gross, sludgy type of 
wastewater of some kind um, that's coming down from that monstrosity over there. Here we are at this uh, metal casing that's built into the wall. It's, uh, it's got styrofoam keeping it all plugged in there. Um, really weird, we've never seen anything like this. Don't even know what it might be for, but it kind of looks like a, a lab hood that it might have had a door on the front and you could perform experiments or maybe assaying in there, like right down here in the mine. Uh, it's the only thing I can think of. And then in front of it is this big stony blob and uh, this sort of rusty torrent that's forming down bright orangey yellow rust color from this dripping water that's coming from a little sprout up here in the ceiling. A little peeing fountain in the ceiling. Okay, from this strange uh, cabinet here off to the side, it, uh, it keeps going. He's down there at that, uh, in the gate. What does it say? Stop, no what? No further. Stop, no further is what it says spray painted down there. So that's going to be interesting. Here's the end of that uh, crazy pipe on the floor. And there's, a, there's an actual concrete abutment built across the floor here with this kind of a dam. And then the flowing water goes right in the pipe and just bypasses this whole section. And there's some workhorses and made of wood like this. There's some uh, timbers here laying on their sides on the edge. And there is the stop no further. <laughs> Another kind of a gate. This one's made of uh, wooden framing and like moisture barrier so and it's been burst through so there is a cinder block on the floor here down by my boots and it's uh it's literally cemented into the rock at one end and then it's got this uh aluminum pipe that just sticks up out of it don't know what the purpose of that might have been but it's in there nice and solid The ceiling gets really high in here, and this is the, uh, the stop no further that we just saw. The plastic's been burst through. Does it keep going? Can you see further? Yeah, it goes further, and then I take a breath of air. Here's looking at the back of the stop no further gate, and it's all made of wood up there, built up into the ceiling. And there's where we just came through, where the plastic is burst. There's more of those terracotta hexagonal things. He's up ahead of me there. We must be a good 600 feet in at this point or more. There's some more uh, junk timbers on the side. And let's keep going. Still going. This is a long one, folks. This is uh, exactly what we like to see. And it just weaves its way. It's fairly straight, but it you know, you know it goes some distance, and then you can't see around a corner. But they were just working their way in. Possibly the end. We're seeing something that may be the end. We're coming on up here on what looks to be the end, but uh, we're gonna have a closer look. Uh, maybe working to the left, the right. Oh, there's a mouse. There's a mouse? 
Is he dead? No, he's looking at me. There's a mouse looking at you. Okay. He's way down here in the dark. Oh, the poor little thing. I see him now. There's a little mouse sitting there in the center of the screen up there on a rock. I can't get up to him. Um, oh, he just ran away. He's moving around. He probably hasn't seen light in a while. <laughs> or maybe. My guess there must be a Come stoke, here, baby. stoke to the surface. Come here, little baby. There he goes. He's running all around up there. Yeah, we're guessing there may be uh, access to the surface from here. Aside from the mouse, um, let's discuss where we're at here. It, this isn't the end. Um, there's the uh, the tunnel we just came in from, heading down there. Oh, eight or nine hundred feet will bring you back to the mouth. Um, off to the side here was the uh, the stoping that went up, and it goes up in there into a chasm that I, we think goes to the surface, and that's where the little mouse was, and. The ceiling goes way up here. It looks like, again, a vein they were trying to go after. And uh, there's a timber across there. And we're down here on the ground. And a drift does continue, so it, it took a hard right here. OK, we're heading down the hard right turn, and he's seeing what looks to be possibly a cave-in or something up there with his light. Um, Might be we're becoming very triangular in here. We're on like a sheer face here to the right. This might have been where they were taking out their vein. Got some big timbers up here. Yeah, on the map, at the end of the map that we do have, we have an old uh, map that we did look at before coming here, and it does show at the end of the mine there is an angled uh, seam or a vein that they were going after that went on an angle up and down. So this might be it. We might be walking in it right now where they took out the material. And just past the timber here where he's standing, if you come through here, there's all your stoping up into there. And there's the stalls holding the uh, the front wall against the back wall. Yeah, this looks like exactly the uh, the drawing of what they had in mind at the end of the mine plan. Okay, down from the uh, the stoping that goes way up in there. That goes up about a good 70, 80, 90 feet. Uh, we'll get a shot of that in a minute, but uh, we've got to make our way through a little rat hole here. Um, all this timbering. And this is uh, an angled face. Um, if I tilt the camera, this is basically what you're looking at from level. But here it is from level. So you're looking at a almost a 45 degree angle seam that they were working here. All right, now we're on the other side of the, uh, the little rat hole here we had to crawl through. This is the, uh, the stoping. It was way up in there. Like I say, that's a good uh, 60, 70 feet up in there. There's uh, some timbering holding back a bunch of junk there. And this is like a 45, 50 degree wall. Just guys had to crawl up in there and take out this whole vein that they were after. And the timbers, there they are. You know, I'll hold the camera to be parallel with the actual rock faces. But here we are back to level. So like I say, a 45 degree back wall, foot wall, back wall, front wall. <laughs> and there's the timbers, the stalls. And we're back to some water again. Here's the water we're back into. Timbering. 
purposeful things, kind of timbered ceiling support. Yeah, we're coming into a section, he says, of timbered ceiling. And we're still following this, uh, this angled vein. This, uh, the tunnel just follows all the way along it. There's the, uh, the timbered ceiling. Creepy. But we have to go under it if we're going to continue, so we, we just be careful and go slow and don't touch anything. Do not touch anything. He's found an ore chute. Okay, here we are by the ore chute, and uh, it goes right up through here, way up into a big stoping area up in there. In the distance, again, up another good 60, 70 feet from the uh, drift level here. There's a little ladder there. It's all busted up, but. Uh, they were up in there digging like moles and again following this angled vein that they were after and bringing it down this ore chute here to the uh, to the main level to the drift he stepped away for the end of the chute so I can get up here it's very very tight quarters well, in the chute, you've got your uh, plug with rocks to the top, of course, as they usually are. Past the chute looks to be a confirmed end. So that looks to be the end of the rod and gold mine. We're gonna head, uh, start heading back out. <laughs>